What is a Christian patriot? Are you a Christian patriot? Former priest and best-selling author Brennan Manning says, quote, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians. People who acknowledge Jesus with their lips walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. It's time people who do not know what a Christian patriot really is or calls themselves Christian patriots examine ourselves through God's eyes, not our own eyes. The man or woman in your mirror, is that person a person of honor? Most of us fall short. We, we miss the target. Christian patriots must first be Christians. Christians are disciples of Jesus Christ who accept his gifts and blessings and benefits, but also walk in obedience to all Christ commanded. So their lifestyle speaks volumes that their lips could never achieve. The Founding Fathers sought honor, freedom from corruption, and a positive devotion to civic virtue. These were key elements of republicanism, and the Founding Fathers made republicanism the core values of the American system of government. They chose the Latin motto Honor et virtus, translated honor and virtue. Historians consider the most important founding fathers to include John Adams, Samuel Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Patrick Henry, and George Washington. Every one of these leaders and all 56 founding fathers were well known to be deeply devoted to God Jehovah, the Holy Bible, the Judeo-Christian religion, and to being men of honor. They talked the talk, but they also walked the walk. Washington is also known for his leadership and honesty. Hamilton for his brilliance, John Adams for his morality, Franklin for his inventiveness, Madison for his scholarship, and Jefferson for his egalitarianism. The 55 initial participants, all of whom would be considered founders in the broad sense of the term, they wrote 15,000 articles, books, and other materials. A study found that the Bible comprised 34% of their direct quotations. They particularly liked quoting the book of Deuteronomy. Corruption was the great evil the founding fathers confronted. When Britain showed too much corruption, it was time to break free with the American Revolution. To overcome the temptations of corruption, such as luxury and bribery in their own lives, the Founding Fathers cultivated a, the virtue of disinterestedness. That is, they made a conscious effort not to be the creature of his financial interests and not give any sign to the public that they sought luxury or bribes. The goal was to be impartial, concerned only for the public good, not the advancement of friends or still less of any political party. Even personal shame and humiliation was preferable to a tarnished honor or the hint of corruption. 
When Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton was accused of corruption for making secret payments to a man named James Reynolds, Hamilton revealed that he'd been set up and was paying blackmail to Reynolds following an affair with Mrs. Reynolds. Duels over honor were common in that era. Hamilton was killed in one, as was Hamilton's son, defending, defining honor. I submit we must first look at the 1828 Webster Dictionary to view the definition of our founding fathers and the many examples of how the word honor is to be used and defined is well documented there. Honor, first definition is the esteem due or paid to worth. High estimation. They use an example, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country in Matthew 13. Second definition is a testimony of esteem. Any expression of respect or of high estimation by words or actions as the honors of war, military honors, funeral honors, civil honors. Third definition is dignity, exalted rank or place of distinction. And they use an example, I have given thee riches and honor in 1 Kings chapter 3. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, says Psalms 104. In doing a good thing, there is both honor and pleasure. A fourth uh, definition is reverence, veneration, or any act by which reverence and submission are expressed as worship paid to the supreme being. A fifth definition is reputation, good name, as his honor is unsullied. Sixth definition, true nobleness of mind magnanimity, dignified respect for character, springing from probity, principle, or moral rectitude. A distinguishing trait in the character of good men. A seventh uh, definition, an assumed appearance of nobleness, scorn of meanness, springing from the fear of reproach without regard to principle, as shall I violate my trust? Forbid it, honor. An eighth definition, any particular virtue much valued as bravery in men and chastity in females. A ninth definition, dignity of men, noble appearance, godlike erect with native honor clad. And then a 10th definition, that which honors he or that which confers dignity as the chancellor is an honor to his profession. An 11th definition, privileges of rank or birth in the plural, restore me to my honors. A 12th, civilities paid, then here a slave or if you will, a Lord, to do the honors and to give the word. Thirteenth definition, that which adorns ornament decoration. The sire then shook the honors of his head. Another definition, a noble kind of seigniory or lordship held of the king in, in Capet or upon my honor, words accompanying a declaration which pledges one's honor or reputation for the truth of it. Example is the, the members of the House of Lords are in Great Britain are not under oath, but give their opinions on their honor. Laws of honor among persons of fashion signify certain rules by which their social intercourse 
is regulated and which are founded on a regard to reputation. These laws require a punctilious attention to decorum and external deportment, but admit of the foulest violations of moral duty. A court of honor, a court of chivalry, a court of civil and criminal jurisdiction, having power to redress injuries of honor and to hold pleas respecting matters of arms and deeds of war. Randy Watt wrote a classic titled, One Warrior's Creed, that best defines a true Christian patriot who is in love with God Jehovah and Jesus and their gift of America that deserves every Christian patriot stand up to defend God and country. One Warrior's Creed says it best. It defines the Christian patriot who is prepared to defend God and country. It goes like this, quote, if today is to be the day, so be it. If you seek to do battle with me this day, you will receive the best that I am capable of giving. It may not be enough, but it will be everything that I have to give. And it will be impressive, for I have constantly prepared myself for this day. I have trained, drilled, and rehearsed my actions so that I might have the best chance of defeating you. I have kept myself in peak physical condition, schooled myself in the martial skills, and have become proficient in the application of combat tactics. You may defeat me, but you will pay a severe price and will be lucky to escape with your life. You may kill me, but I'm willing to die if necessary. I do not fear death, for I've been close enough to it on enough occasions that it no longer concerns me. But I do fear the loss of my honor and would rather die fighting than to have it said I was without courage. So I will fight you, no matter how insurmountable it may seem, and to the death if need be, in order that it may never be said of me that I was not a warrior. That was written by Randy Watt. It's called One Warrior's Creed. Uh, even even uh, the, uh, Yerat Shamayim uh, in the Hebrew fear of heaven or uh, Havet Hashem, the love of God. This is an excerpt from American Jewish University. Standing before the assembled tribes of Israel, Moses recalls the stirring moment at Mount Sinai when God gave the Ten Commandments. He then continues with the Shema, reminding us of God's unity and pledging our loyalty to God's exclusive service. Immediately following, Moses continues his instructions to the people by telling them, quote, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You see, for Moses, the most important component of serving God is to love God. In his commentary to the Torah, Rashi, uh, in 11th century France, affirms that judgment. He explains that Moses meant, and I quote, perform God's commandments out of love. One cannot compare a person who acts out of love to one who acts out of fear, who serves a master out of fear. When the latter feels overburdened, he leaves and goes away. Rashi, a keen student of the human heart, knows that fear can motiva motivate behavior only so long as the power of compulsion remains. As soon as the source of fear loses its strength, service stops. 
What strikes me most, Moses had just been up close and personal with God Jehovah in his Shekinah glory, yet spoke only of obeying God's rules out of love for God. Moses was no doubt awed and overwhelmed and had a healthy respect for God. But Moses was in love, not in fear. So what is a Christian patriot? Every American citizen who is truly in love with God Jehovah, who gave us the great gift of America. A Christian patriot is prepared to advance and defend the kingdom of God Jehovah in America against all enemies who oppose our way of life as Christian patriots. Wow. Are you a Christian patriot? For God, Jehovah, and country, I'm Louis E. Johnston, Jr.